right about 79, there were a, a group of companies that were being that were being born uh, in connection with the emerging biotechnology in, out of the medical school. Uh, in fact, so many companies were being born that um, Don Kennedy, who was president at the time, started to worry started to worry about whether he had to uh, have special regulations at Stanford to regulate conflict of interest between mm -hmm. faculty and the companies. In that environment, we saw two things unfolding. One was that there was a very large demand for a piece of software we had produced in the heuristic programming project, which was the software generalization of uh, the Mycin medical diagnosis expert system called eMycin. Very large demand for that, and and uh, and, a, and and a smaller but very but substantial demand for a a Blackboard framework piece of software that we had developed called Age, A G E, which modestly stood for attempt to generalize. We were attempting <laughs> to generalize what we had done in the sonar and in the crystallography examples. Uh, so that was one example. That was one instance where there was a lot of which you might call user demand for for this stuff. Companies were after us. We were shipping out literally hundreds of copies of this software and documentation. <clears throat> Seemed like a company could do that better than, <clears throat> than a laboratory. The second <clears throat> place where we had um, a lot of demand was uh, users coming in over the ARPANET. Maybe it, by that time it they were coming in on the NSFnet portion of, of the network, but they were coming in to use the SUMEX machine to do uh, sequence manipulation in the unfolding, emerging sequence databases that were being built at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like that was also the basis for another company, and we got IntelliGenetics up and running in um, 19, r roughly speaking, late 1980, selling sequence analysis software on a deck machine that was networked in some way, and I've, I'm not sure how. Maybe it was via the timeshare net or mm -hmm. something else at that time. The the uh, other company was called Technology, and as you can see, the difference in the names. Intelligenetics points to biology. Right. And tech knowledge points to technology and knowledge-based systems. And there it was not four people or two people, it was 20 people. Mm -hmm. Because my view of, of that was that everyone who had helped us get to this point needed to be in some sense rewarded by being a participant in this new enterprise. So I just made a list of all the people who helped us, who contributed something, like the graduate student who did eMycin, and Tom Rinfleisch who helped us with SumEx, and Bruce Buchanan who was, uh, at that point, Philosophy. Uh, so, like associate yeah. director of the laboratory, and Bob Engelmore, and for Blackboard Systems, and Penny, and my wife, and, and people like that who had contributed. Mm -hmm. Now, get, starting a company with 20 people is It's bizarre, and I didn't know it at the time. Uh, it's only later when, when people in the entrepreneurial world who know about these things basically said, are you crazy? You can't do that. You have to have a group of people who think in common, act fast. That's the, the way the culture works. Um, but I never thought that 20 people would be a hard, a hard thing to do. Uh, turned out it's like herding cats. I had thought that we would get a... a professional businessman to run the thing, the professional businessman will get venture capital, and then using the venture capital they would hire good people. Instead what happened was a significant chunk of our own people gravitated over there because the work was exciting, it was a new thing, and it was paying a lot more than we were paying. So we, in a way, we kind of decimated our, our laboratory by doing this. Anyway. Long, long and short story is they spent a lot of money. They, um, they had a, uh, they being the, the professional businessman that we hired, 
uh, tried to negotiate a uh, intellectual property agreement with Stanford for the rights to use the uh, eMice and software that had been developed at Stanford. Uh, Stanford at the time was what, they were very much of a novice in the area of dealing with small companies. Mm -hmm. They they still are difficult, I hear, but but they were impossible at that time. So the guy just said, okay, technology will develop its own, forget e -mice. And, and they spent a lot of money doing that. And by the time they finished doing that, uh, Osborne had a $1,000 version of that software, out, or maybe a $100 version of that software out and running on the early PCs. And mm -hmm. their $5,000 version wasn't going to sell. And so it didn't work out so well for that company. And then eventually it got sold. It's still, uh, and then it, it resurrected itself. It, it's still in business. It's still in Palo Alto. It still employs a couple dozen people doing uh, military applications mostly. Uh, Intelligenetics couldn't get a grip on the biology software market because those people at the University of Wisconsin I was telling you about before basically were offering the same thing for free and PCs were coming into play. So you didn't need you didn't need one end of a PDP-10. You could buy your own PC for $2,000 and run the University of Wisconsin software for nothing. Mm 